Hello friends. Mountain lions have caused serious damage in urban areas and threaten livestock in the state of Colorado. How are hunters dealing with the growing numbers of these predators? In this video, we explore how Coloradoans are facing the challenge of managing the more than 12,000 mountain lions in their area. especially in areas like Boulder and Colorado Springs where mountain lions are more prevalent, with an estimated 5,400 in the Americas. In 2023 alone, more than 250 reported sightings were near residential areas, with nearly 70% occurring in the winter. The local veterinary clinic in Denver reported more than 45 dog injuries from mountain lion attacks. Fortunately, there have been no reports of attacks on humans. Residents are reminded to be vigilant, as mountain lions often lurk in the brush near residential areas. Colorado spends about $5 million a year to keep mountain lions away, but their numbers have not decreased. Faced with the mountain lion surge, Colorado residents have instituted controlled hunting from December to February. This time was chosen because mountain lions are easier to track as they move through the snow. Hunting is allowed mainly in areas like Colorado Springs and its surrounding suburbs while areas near the city center and on nature preserves are strictly regulated and prohibited. Hunting organizations such as the Florida Wildlife Federation use rifles and dogs as one of the most effective strategies. Hunters must have at least one to two years of experience to ensure they can handle high-powered rifles such as the 36 to 300 or 300 Winchester Magnum.
hunters work in teams of three to six using GPS and radios to track and command their dogs. Plot hounds are renowned for their stamina and tracking skills. When the dogs corner a mountain lion, the hunters approach cautiously, assessing the wind and ensuring a clear line of sight. With these methods, hunting groups have reduced the mountain lion threat by up to 35% each year. But not everyone agrees with this method, some question the ethics behind it. What do you think? Hunters are allowed to use three to five dogs per hunting team each hunting season in Colorado. The dogs rely on footprints and scent to quickly locate mountain lions. Tracking becomes easier in cold weather with snow covering the ground, which shortens the search time. However, hunters must be careful when moving because the terrain is slippery and they need to wear appropriate protective gear, especially since temperatures can drop to 15 deck during the Colorado winter. Mountain lions are dangerous carnivores that pose a significant challenge to hunters. In Colorado, hunters need at least two years of big game hunting experience and must pass a rigorous test to obtain a license. Regulations limit hunting to 150 animals per season. Hunters must report to local authorities within 24 hours with details of the hunt. To increase hunting efficiency, Colorado authorities have incorporated bows and arrows into mountain lion hunting. Bow hunting allows hunters to approach prey at close range, 20 to 40 yards, compared to using a gun. The advantage of bow hunting is that it is quiet so that prey cannot be detected. If hunting at too close a distance, hunters may face the risk of a surprise attack from a mountain lion due to insufficient reaction time. <sighs> yeah. 
Therefore, hunters take training courses to develop quick reflexes and the ability to accurately judge their behavior to ensure safety. Hunters who hunt mountain lions in Colorado should pay special attention to frequent changes in hunting license policies including quotas, legal hunting periods and permitted hunting areas. These changes require hunters to stay updated with government updates to avoid violations. If hunters fail to comply with regulations, they can face fines of up to $5,000. subscribe to our channel. Comment below the description to contribute to building a legal hunting community. The next video will not disappoint you, please follow. In the wilds of Canada, a new reality begins to emerge from a special breeding laboratory. From breeding efforts to serve pork demand, a new species of pig called Super Pig unfortunately escaped and became an unexpected threat to the people here. The story begins in the year 2014 of the 21st century at an agricultural research area in British Columbia, Canada. Here, scientists decided to breed new pig breeds with the aim of providing a source of high quality and large quantities of pork for the market. They created the super pig breed by combining the genes of wild boars and domestic souls in hopes of creating pigs with high fertility and weights of up to 800 pounds. This has created a huge income for people. <laughs> Locals were initially excited about this project. A normal pig usually produces about 10 to 12 pigs per season. Super pigs in the experiment have shown the ability to reproduce up to 30 pigs per season.
However, an unfortunate incident occurred in the summer of 2019 when a group of super pigs broke through the security fence and escaped, starting to spread throughout the area. This makes Canadians worried due to their severity due to their quick adaptation to the environment and rapid reproduction rate. Farms were destroyed and villagers who witnessed this scene were surprised. Once creatures raised in a laboratory, they are now out of control, bringing great danger to humans. The scientific community and the government faced harsh criticism, as their unintended consequences became a real threat to human life. Therefore, Canadians use wooden fences and wire networks to prevent wild boars from entering fields. However, this method is expensive and has a short usage time. With the situation increasingly serious, the government has sought a new solution using guns. Recently, the Canadian government has officially approved an organized hunting program to control and limit the explosion of the super pig population. To participate in these hunting activities, hunters must be 18 years old and undergo a health examination to ensure they can endure the harsh conditions of deep forest terrain. This not only helps ensure their own safety, but also contributes to protecting the community. Hunting activities are not allowed to take place near residential areas to avoid the risk of harm to people. The main hunting season for people in Canada usually takes place in the fall, from September to November. Because this is the time they go looking for food to start preparing for the harsh winter to come. they are less wary and easier to approach.
In addition, hunting in the fall also helps minimize impacts on spring and summer breeding species, thereby reducing negative impacts on biodiversity. Hunting has become part of the living culture of Canadians. To encourage participation in regulated hunting and maintain proper management of wildlife populations, the Canadian government provides hunters with a stipend ranging from $200 to $500. Hunters practice skills such as hiding to avoid detection by wild boars. Hunting licenses also require hunters to report specific numbers to the authorities to be able to control wild boars and avoid illegal hunting. In hunting clubs, the weapon that hunters often use is the .22LR. This type of gun is popular because of its high accuracy and is suitable for long-range sniper competitions. Hunters need to undergo a rigorous training and testing process over a period of 6 to 12 months to be allowed to use this gun. However, when using the .22 LR, Canadians note that it has some disadvantages such as the destructive power is not as strong as other guns, requiring hunters to have 20-40th vision to aim. Exactly. However, it can still take down prey quickly in a period of three to five seconds if used properly. As I learned about Canadian hunting culture, I realized that hunting here is not only a recreational activity but also a tradition passed down from generation to generation. Canadians never hunt alone but always go with at least three people. to ensure safety but also create a strong team spirit, helping them coordinate better in hunting wild boars. <laughs> they think this is right because it not only reduces risks but also improves hunting efficiency.
However, a secret that few people know is that this wild boar hunting activity will stop in 2030. When the government decides that hunting will no longer be necessary because the number of wild boar has decreased significantly. After the end of wild boar hunting, Canadians often hold a big party to process wild boar meat. After being hunted, meat will be processed into typical dishes and rewards for hunters who have made efforts to protect their attacking homeland. This is not only an occasion for celebration, but also a way for locals to honor their hunting traditions. This activity has been recognized by conservation and environmental organizations, receiving strong support from the community. Local people understand that hunting not only helps protect crops and natural resources, but also contributes to maintaining balance in the ecosystem. If you find the video interesting, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to press the channel subscription button to have more luck and protection from God. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, Please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.